So, an incredible story of the Old West in California. I'm here with Dr. David DeHaas, who along with Don Chaput wrote this incredible book, The Herbs Invade Southern California. Remind viewers who Wyatt Earp is. Okay, well, Wyatt Earp was probably the most famous uh, marshal of the Old West, uh, mainly known in Dodge City. He was the marshal in the old cow towns. And it's gunfight at the OK Corral. Right? Gunfight at the OK Corral and Tombstone is where he really, uh, his legend really exploded. Uh, the thing that's interesting about this story is it turns out he spent much more of his life in Los Angeles, Santa Monica and uh, Malibu and Beverly Hills. Tell me about the old soldier's home which is over on the VA facility. Tell me the origin and how they got involved with that. After the Civil War, there were a lot of disabled veterans and they, you know, they were, they fought for the country. They had nowhere to go, nowhere to live. They couldn't support themselves. They couldn't work anymore. Uh, so there was a need for homes for these people. And the first home was in 1866, after the Civil War, built for the, in Togus, Maine. 18 88-ish, uh, the soldier's home was built on land that was do um, pretty much donated by um, John Percival Jones and Robert Baker. And Arcadia Bandini de Baker, a very famous person, she's known as the godmother of Santa Monica. There's a statue of her at Palisade Parks to this day overlooking the pier there. So when did the Earp show up at the, who was, who was the first Earp to show up okay. at the old so soldier's we'll home? Skip ahead a little, a little bit. Uh, um, uh, about 1901, the first decade of the 20th century is when everything started to happen. The Earps spent nearly a decade in L.A. And it's funny, if you look at every other book on white, they don't even mention it. And this was like their biggest part of their life together, not even mentioned in every, all oh, there's hundreds of biographies on white, and rarely a mention. White Earp in November of 1901 is documented being in L.A. at the, uh, I think, the Hollenbeck Hotel. And then in June of 1902, Allie Earp, all of a sudden, is documented being uh, moving from uh, Virgil's in Prescott at the time. Allie Earp, his wife, comes out to L.A. And that same month, uh, the father, Nicholas Earp, moves into the old soldier's home. Then, uh, early in, uh, in 1903, uh, uh, Virgil is there, too. So all of a sudden, all the brothers, the whole family's there. Adelia Earp, the sister who lived in San Bernardino, is nearby. And they're all documented showing up in L.A. And end of 1901, early 1902, stuff starts to happen. So, David, the Earps are congregating in Southern California. The old soldier home's been built. Sautel has been created. Santa Monica's waiting in the background. And one of the things that I know the old soldier's home is famous for is the Pacific Electric Red Line balloon line. Tell us what that's all about. Okay. Well, uh, now you have the uh, Santa Monica uh, and 20 miles or uh, 20 miles ish away, Los Angeles, and now somewhere in between four miles east of Santa Monica and 60 miles west of Los Angeles, you have another city developing and a lot of veterans are moving and this is a real desirable place to live. Now you have all this money there and so people wanted to tap into it and not only that, uh, Sattel it was it's a beautiful park, the uh, the soldiers' home, beautiful v buildings and uh, designs, and so uh, tourists wanted to come and visit. I know you mentioned in the book a lot of the kind of the scandals that were happening with people and the pensions and whatnot. Explain a little of that to us. As soon as the soldier home opened, there needed all of a sudden now these guys started selling land around the soldiers' homes to so the families. You know, the soldiers were there, but their families wanted to be nearby too. So they started selling Sautel. The city of Sautel developed right next to the soldier's home. And that was uh, 4th Street, and that's on the cover of our book. This 4th Street is the famous blind pig where all the illegal stuff was going on. Explain what a blind pig is. Okay, all right. So um, the, a law was passed in 1895. Robert Bull uh, uh, in L.A. passed a law. You couldn't sell liquor within a mile and a half of the soldier's home. So as soon as they made it uh, illegal to be there, all these uh, bootlegging operations open, and it's really funny. Speakeasies before there were speakeasies. And we call our book a uh, a um, guys and dolls West Coast style. And I don't know, uh, you were probably around when the yeah the old play, the Broadway musical Guys and Dolls, and then the movie with Marlon Brando and Frank Sinatra. I was one of my favorite growing up. The music's beautiful, and because it's exactly the same story. Uh, 
Sky Masterson, played by Marlon Brando in the movie, was patterned after Bat Masterson, Wyatt Earp's good friend and Marshal of the Old West. And there was one story we tell in the book about a barber shop where the guy was a barber shop and he saw, but the minute the police weren't around, they had alcohol in the coffee pot. So everybody, they weren't coming for air cuts. As soon as the cops were gone, they, they were getting drinking coffee from the coffee top, everybody there. The gambling yeah. table yeah. flipping over. And yeah. All. And then another funny story in the book that we go into is a guy who used to ride around town on a bicycle and when the police were around, he'd, you know, he's just right on the bike. When he ran into one of the old soldiers on the street, they would put an order in for him, and he would ride his bike down to Santa Monica, where alcohol sales were legal, uh, and pick up alcohol, and then he'd come back and deliver, you know, when the police weren't looking, drive all around town delivering everybody their... Uh, their uh, drinks but I at the time 20 22 years ago I had no idea how deep this was and then the thing that got us going is uh, my co-author Don Shawput he's he's published a ton of books he's a great researcher and he's known as Virgil Earp's biographer he wrote the uh, seminal book on uh, seminal book on Virgil Earp so when you do that uh, you get a lot of family members writing to you and asking you questions and he got a question from somebody after he wrote the book that he found a, in a dump site in Goldfield, Nevada, where, is, where Virgil died. Somebody found in the dump site there a token that said VW Earp on one side, uh, Sautel, California, and then on the other side, good for five cents or whatever. Well, VW Earp is Virgil Walter Earp. That's White Earp's brother. And, uh, and all of a sudden, even though uh, Don was Virgil's biographer, he didn't know that Virgil really spent a lot of time there. We knew that the father was there, we knew that the brother Newton was there, we knew that James occasionally appeared, but all of a sudden it turns out Virgil was there too. And then we looked into it further and we found all kinds of documentation that Wyatt was there, so all the brothers were there. It was, the, your, it was your Rosetta Stone. Yeah, yeah it was the first de decade of the uh, uh, 20th century. Um, they were all there. And were the Earps famous back then? I mean, was the story of Tombstone and Wyatt Earp, I mean, would they be... I mean, I noticed some of the wider coverage is at the newspaper. I mean, were they pretty famous? I was at the uh, Charlotte Hall Museum doing some research in Prescott early on and uh, pulled up an article there when Virgil uh, died. And um, there are five mentions of his brother Wyatt Earp is the famous Old West Marshal of the Wild West. His brother Wyatt Earp, like five times talking about how famous, and this is 1905, way before the movies came out, way before the book came out. The Earps were known around the West back when they were alive, back when the, um, yeah, it wasn't when the book came out in 1930, the books came out in the 1930s, and when the movies came out in 1930, mid-1930s. and So that's our look at the Earps Invade Southern California. Get the book. Thank you, Dr. David DeHaas.